Welcome everyone. Um, so today we're going to see a presentation by Angela Buscheska. And Angela is was a valedictorian in her high school, is and an upcoming student at Lafayette College. She's currently taking a gap year with Global Citizen Academy, and she believes that power of never giving up is the only thing that can bring miracles in life. She is 19 years old and has a dream to create a world of inspired youth that will make the earth a better place to live in. This presentation will inspire you to become, as Angela says, a climate hero that the planet Earth, that planet earth deserves to have. Take it away, Angela. Thanks a lot for this great, I would say, uh, thoughts of the session. And thanks a lot, UN Impact Global Summit, for giving me this, I would say, once in a lifetime chance uh, to be speaking with all of you today. I'm really so happy and so excited to be here. And um, yeah, as Noah mentioned at the beginning, this session is mainly made to, to learn about harnessing the power of small daily activities with um, a movement, as I said, I called it Android. So I would like to mention that at the end of this session, I thought, I think that all of you here would be able to think differently about our everyday actions and to see how those minor daily activities, which you don't pay a lot of attention to, can really be uh, very important in, in your lifetime and also seen from Planet Church. So I would say, let's begin and buckle up everyone because we're going to take you on a very interesting journey. So um, before I start, I would like to say a couple of words about myself. So uh, as previously mentioned, my name is Angela Buscheska. I would say I clarify myself most as an optimist, first of all, because I always want to look at the bright side of life, not because it's just easier, but because it is better. When there are problems, and there are a lot of problems, especially in this year of 2020, uh, seeing the better side, I would say, of the world gives you an opportunity to solve these problems. I'm a student, um, lifelong learner. I am currently taking a gap year with Global Citizen Academy, and next year, hopefully, I will start engineering at Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. And um, I'm a life changer. Uh, not only that, I want to, to see where are opportunities in my life and to start uh, doing something differently, but I want to be someone who has like made something, um, I would say, valuable for Planet Church, and I could not do with all of you guys here today. So I don't want to talk about a lot of experience, if I can say, because it is something that goes and passes away. And if sometimes some of us doesn't have this a certain award that we can win, we are still what we are deeply, and I'm still being optimal. But if I can mention something, that would be that I'm a founder CEO of Power to Youth, that's a nonprofit organization. Um, I'm a, a finalist of a social impact award and um, a high school valedictorian. I really love debate. So I founded a new and debate club at my school. And that is actually what brought me here talking to you wonderful people. So yeah, the journey will start at one place called Skopje, North Macedonia. So actually, I'm from North Macedonia, and Skopje is the capital city. And as you can see in the picture, it is a beautiful city full with light, with joy, with excitement. Everyone is so friendly, happy, outgoing. So that is actually in the blood of Balkan people, to be so friendly with each other, communicate and talking. Uh, Skopje is known as a city of light, as you can see, because it has all these wonderful places around it. And um, it is actually giving you the power and will of life. And now you can say, okay, we come to a session about global impact and she's uh, talking about a tourism. Well, yeah, I, oh, I really want all of you to come and visit here. I wish, I really wish that was the reason why I'm talking to you about Skopje today. But dear people, this is also Skopje. Yes, the beautiful city of lights, the enthusiastic place, the place of city of lights, is this on the right side? It is covered with smog and fog for more than half of the year. So I just want to make a side note that Skopje in 1963 survived, I would say, the greatest earthquake that was ever present in our region. And for the citizens in that area, they thought that there will be no tomorrow because it seems so dreadful that everything is going to end. But with the help of so many people around the world, Skopje managed to rebuild itself in a very beautiful city to make us all proud. But why? Why did it manage when we cannot see it more than eight year, more than eight months in a year? 
actually it is sometimes the situation is so bad so if you can like put one arm in front of you you cannot see it and all this excitement of the city everything that it has around it goes into thin air because tell me you cannot be happy and excited when you can breathe so now i know in your head so what is happening actually there well, what can be the reason for this great pollution and you might ask that it's overpopulation well just let me tell you a bit of the history Scorpio was not always like that so i'm 19 years old as previously mentioned and then i was a young child like five year old i remember going there because they had a wonderful zoo i remember that i said you didn't have but out of context they were it was shining clear and we don't remember that there was a pollution after that we managed to become the top 100 of the cities and people from all over the world were starting to say yes people the situation is dangerous but we say no it's just something some effect and it doesn't correlate with all of us we managed to come to the 50. We managed to come to realize that there is something behind us. We managed to become top five and we realized the situation is kind of difficult. And this year, this past winter, in the midst of COVID, we woke up with some great news. We managed to be the first, first ever city to be from Europe on the stop list. So as you can see, this is ranking from uh, one night that Skopje bed all the people, not, on, not only in Europe, but in the whole world. And our place is near the Bocata, Dhaka, Mumbai. And you know, the cities are huge, overpopulated and overcrowded. But we are not. We are not overpopulated, but we are the opposite thing. We are actually uh, facing a great migration of people in the Western countries due to, I would say, better conditions for the world. And we are struggling because we don't have enough people. So we are in the opposite state of our population. Now you may say, that is the industry, definitely is the industry that is the greatest cause of pollution. Well, yes, but no, actually. So industry is a great factor. I can say of the pollution that is going on because of course, as every, big city there is an industry and there are no strong rules in north macedonia about the industry and the regulating uh, factors but there is a small industry related to all these cities because uh we're not having those great uh industries maybe of toxic materials or unprotected they're so small and they're so i would say unimportant in that scale then you will say maybe it's about landfills because they are really known to be one of the greatest uh causes of pollution but at this point, I can say that the landfills are not any near, near the smallest problem because every uh, landfill is copier is pretty regulated. Okay, then what is it? Let me tell you. First and foremost is the traffic. So actually, the traffic is one of the greatest causes of the pollution because we are in a position where we are actually trying to get into your opinion. That means that all of the cars that are from the European Union, the, the old cars which are not allowed in their cities, are transferred to us. Our economy is bad, and people are willing to buy the old cars because they don't have any solution. And all this traffic and all these bad materials that are released from the old cars cause the, the greatest part of the world. Moreover, Skopje has perfectly regulated public transport. But not only in COVID, people are not willing to use even before. And if you ask them why, they will say that it's too difficult, too expensive, too crowded, and all the other stuff that you can say. I have some relatives in Skopje, and I ask, okay, why aren't you using public transport? It's so easier. Like, there, there are special lines for, for buses, and you can easily reach a place than going in car. And they can say, ah, it's too crowded. Yeah, it's too crowded to get from a place for 10 minutes and for 40 minutes. Then the second greatest cost is the headache. And here is one bad solution where we don't have anything to do because the heating is made by wood. Uh, if you're going to use electricity for heating, it is very expensive. So uh, I would say more than 80% can afford it. And plus the electricity in North Macedonia is made by thermoelectric centrals, which is actually causing greater pollution. Moreover, uh, there is an opportunity to gas, to have heating by gas, but on the other side, that is not available for all citizens. So they must use wood. And sometimes they can say, like, you guys are unlucky, and we are really unlucky in this situation. 
because everything that is causing the industry, the heating, the traffic, the smoke, every CO2 emission that is produced in the city is trapped down because we are having this great fountain, uh, like the, the background is zoom here behind me. You're having the city, which is the valley, and you're having another mountain. So everything that is caused is trapped here and has nowhere to go. So these are the great, uh, I would say the greatest factors that cause the pollution. And at this moment, I would say that there are some other um, small factors that are not directly, but it is definitely by like the solution. So uh, people are not willing to invest in more uh, sustainable um, energies, uh, nor better cars for them so that they cannot pollute them. There are no options for heating and all the electricity, most of it is produced by thermal trees. So these are something that we are not able to change. I mean, it's pretty hard. And uh, especially now with COVID, we got in a very strong recession so that all money that was allocated to go to this sector is actually reallocated to go to ground. So it seems like a one-way path doesn't have to go out, but we must, we must save the city because we will die. It all die. And then why would save the city from the earthquake? So at this point, I would like to ask all of you to put your uh, some ideas in the chat. What are you guys doing? Or do you have like some ideas that can help us to solve air pollution, that can help us to make small changes, anything you have? Uh, ideas, please stop in the chat. I would really like to, to hear from all of you all over the world because I believe that sharing is caring and um, you guys here are from everywhere and I would love to hear what are you doing to help uh, with this cause. And while you're writing in the chat, I will tell you what we are doing to stop it. So actually what most of the people in Macedonia are doing this. We complain. We complain every single day about everything that is around us. You have several types of people that you can meet uh, and question them about the air pollution. First, they will say that, yeah, they would really like to do something to help. But on the other side, they cannot. They're just a person. And it is the government is something greater than us. We are not able to do it. That is the first type of the question that you will meet. The second type of person that you will meet is to say, who am I to care? I have my own life. I go to work. I go to party. I am doing this. Why I should care about the air pollution, right? I was not born to deal with some air pollution here. I'm not the government. The government is safe. And you have a third part of people which will say that. It is a kind of religion. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not believing you. So I don't. Why is this happening? When I was, especially this is for older people, most characteristic, they will say that when I was young, nobody was saying about climate change. And this is everything that you're made out. Yes, so this is the current situation. And now my question, and the ask is, what can we do to stop it? Because, yeah, I told you the situation. I told you what we are doing, which is basically nothing. But we cannot let it like that. We have uh, writers, Greta Thunberg's, uh, I would say, fans and people who respect and uh, organize uh, Fridays for Future, and I was really ha happy to, to be part of them when I was in Skopje, but it is so small group of people that are doing that, which is actually nothing across the, the, the greatest population that is basically in these two categories. It's a really tough situation, but all diamonds are made under pressure, so we must get copy to be the diamond that we want. So at this point, uh, I can see that uh, there is an answer in the chat. So yeah, great idea. Yes, cleanups are really important for this one. Um, and uh, I would say that I am living, I, I mentioned that Skopje is not having landfill problems, but my city is having landfill problems. So that is a great idea. Uh, congratulations for your actions. And here I can just, Roll on after this, what we can do to stop it. So, guys, I mentioned that transport is a huge issue in my city, and I believe in many, many other cities across the world. And I have my aunt who lives in Skopje, and I was just chatting with her, uh, asking about her experience and what, how is she spending the day. Just I would say that this is in common. So, before that, it was worse. So, she has also to her work. 
She goes from work to home back. She cooks lunch and then she goes to buy groceries for the next day. Then she comes back home. Then she rides around 40 minutes to the gym. And if I ask her why that gym so far away, she would say that is the best one. So yeah, it is equally the best one. And then she goes from home. She is doing really valuable job, and I love her so much. But when Planet Earth sees what she's done, Planet Earth sees that she has done six flights with God, which means she, six times released meant of CO2 emissions. So I ask her, what do you plan to do to change that? Or what is possible for you to do something or go something about that? Or, okay, now it's COVID, so I realize if you guys don't want to use the public transport, nor do I, yeah, especially if you are coming from uh, some country that has great, great problem, like I have here. But there is an opportunity for that. Also, this can be the situation for her. And I can see rolling answers in the chat. Yeah, definitely ride bike or walk near places. That is actually the point of this. So look at the next thing. She goes from home to work. Instead of going back, she can go to the groceries, then come back to home. She really loves sunny days, and she's often complaining to me about how she's not using the sun, and she's riding 40 minutes to the special gym. Okay, it's very important to have all your activities as you prefer, but some days you can skip gym and instead go running, maybe socializing with people or uh, getting some clean uh, air when they have this opportunity now, because in the winter they don't have, and then go home. She has done mainly the same job, just with two small switches in the grocery part and in the gym part. And the planter, this is what she has done. She has done only two. Only two rides with cars. And that is two times CO2 compared to the previous one, which was six. So she saved her CO2 emission for actually uh, three times. And that is a blessing. So that is, what is the power of these small activities? to make great changes. Or also, you can modify this as well. So imagine, uh, in greater good times that will come after COVID, she can walk to the bus station because she has plenty of them close because she's living in the city center. And also bus stops are really available for not people who are not living in the city center. She can get the bus, go to the place of work, then get another that. And when Planet Third sees in this situation, if this around zero CO2 emission because the, the bus is already there, uh, and even though she, she causes by being in the bus, it is really minor compared to those six CO2 emissions made by her car. And she will save money by this because uh, using the petrol in, in a place where there's so much traffic is so much expensive than just, uh, in this way, she will have to, to spend a euro on both of the two tickets. And in the previous way, she had to spend minimum five euros to, to get on the, the petrol in the car. So it turns out that we can really harness the power of these small activities to, to make a great change. So I would say that you okay, she switched, she has done this or that, and what is the real impact? Well, we have analyzed a few cases like this and Actually, one person can save 10 kilograms of CO2 emissions by switching this small, like instead of going to the groceries after work, go to the grocery before. Or all these small minor activities can save uh, up to 10 uh, kilograms CO2 emissions. So I can say that if we get thousands of people doing this every day, we can save or we can make a carbon offset for a continental plane from my place to Vienna or that will be an uh, intercontinental plane of around three hours. And it's just that a lot. That is a lot for making a small, small, small changes per day. So I would like to say that uh, this is one idea that we have gained through some like consultations, but the main, uh, I would say motivation between this was me. I'm 19 year old girl. So when I actually got, I would say my driving license, I got rid of all bus transportations. And what did I do? Is was going from one place to another, from one place to another without thinking about the CO2 emissions that I caused. And when I actually looked one month on the petrol money that I have used, it was frightening. So not was like more than 10 times of what I was using the bus before, but also it was like more time consuming and uh, I don't want to speak about the CO2 emissions. 
So then I realized that instead of going from one back come home, going from one back come home, I can just really integrate my car schedule, my public transport schedule, and harnessing the sun because I'm really a sunny person, a person who loves sun. And in that moment when I was driving, I was still spending all the time in the car instead of going out and enjoying what I want to do. So here comes the idea of making something that will help people to all do all of this and without spending uh, time to let me think now if I combine with this or this. So I thought that it is the best to put this in uh, one kind of mobile application that is now in the procedure of completing. But this is just a small prototype that I would like to explain. So what basically we are planning to do is just add an activity that you want by or enter all the transport that you want to go, time of start, time of end, and then you have the full combination day, if I can say. And then just the software to calculate you how you can go in your comfort zone, save the most CO2 emissions. So this will actually help you to stay in the zone. So you don't have to, like all people think when you're talking to them about environment combination, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to reinvent small daily, uh, I would say, uh, things that you're doing just to save a lot more CO2 emissions and cost as well. So at this point, um, I would like to add another thing that we are actually doing for day, apart from the combination. So I realized that this was a great impact, but the transport, you cannot save everything. And I want to say to every day. I know it's election season in the US, but I'm not talking about that kind of votes, even though it is a great, great correlation. So each one of us, when we are going to elections or when we are going to go, I don't know your age, but it doesn't matter. We are giving actually the power to one president or leader or whatever it is to represent us, right? And when we are buying something from some company, we are actually giving the votes to. Imagine, you have um, a company that produces all its clothes sustainable. You are giving your money to that company, which means you're giving their vote, your vote to them. If there are many votes for that company who is producing something more sustainable, then that company will get the power and help people to produce more sustainable things. On the other side, I would say that you're having this other company who is not doing sustainable. And if all of the people give their votes to unsustainable, then she will get over to the market. Same as the president. And now you can ask me like, okay, and where, where do we integrate this? Integrate this everywhere. I mentioned it with clothes because it is very popular, the shopping of clothes every day now. But it's also very, very popular with cosmetics. Especially now in the COVID-19 period, I'm going to tell that great story about this. So um, we are all now, I would say, uh, users of disinfections and all this other stuff that we're using daily for COVID. And there were some, uh, there is a lot of things that are uh, made uh, to, I would say, tackle customers in the COVID period. And there was me in the store deciding who to choose. And one woman came to me like, they're all the same. They're cost nearly the same. So why worry? Why worrying? Because that one there has package of plastic and that one there has package that is recyclable. So I want to save, but I don't want to pollute the environment. And they're costing nearly the same. Actually, the one that I bought with the recycled material was really cheaper than the other one, which has full plastic. So did I save the world with that plastic? No, definitely. But if I had like thousands of shops buy that with less plastic than that with more plastic, again, we won't save the world, but we'll get them power. And if they raise the power, they can help us to save the world later. And I would like to, to say about this, especially with the food. So I have talked with a lot of friends and talk, uh, to a lot of people about food and they can say, oh no, I'm not becoming vegan and vegetarian just for the climate change. I'm not a vegan and vegetarian only. But you know what? You have cookies. You have cookies in the supermarket, and you have the one cookies which has three layers of plastic, and you have cookies in one layer of plastic. That is where you can make these small changes. That is where you can all act. We can all act to make these small changes for a better world. So, as I mentioned, it is great. It is great to go vegan. It is great to do to put solar panels and all this stuff. 
but we are not able to, and it is perfectly okay. But what we are able to, to choose the cookies with one layer of plastic over those with three layers of plastic. To do the disinfection with recyclable plastic, with recyclable material over that with, with an unrecyclable heavy plastic. To choose the company that has more sustainable clothes, more sustainable a way of um, how they're producing the clothes over the other one. So about this, what our plan, our plan is to do is to tell people how to actually know something, how green something really is. Because I, as I mentioned, my city is pretty polluted. And as a result, we have the heroes now. We have the heroes who are telling that everything is green. And there are some green store, green shop. We produce greenest or most sustainable or most eco-friendly. Or as I have asked once in one store, they have said that their paper and notebooks are most environment friendly. That was the name. And I asked, like, what do you mean by most environment friendly? Yeah, we're the most eco-friendly and we're the best with environment. We don't even explain what we're doing. So we're actually victims of greenwashing. Like it is true, greenwashing is a new cyber, uh, I would say cyber bullying, that all of this stuff, because everyone proves to be good. And if you ask why, it is trendy. Yeah, cool. Then also we don't understand the chemicals. So I have a friend who is actually a chemical studying chemical engineering and she's really good at uh, saying whatever is in some product and I know to, to put a I would say a small picture of whatever I have and just tell me what this contains and she said it's really easy but it's really weird to me and I could not understand the word for it and I don't dare from every single product to, to search on internet and find thousands of materials that there is and that is why I want to take action at this point. And just to, to bust your one myth is that it's really expensive. I agree. There can be some points which are so expensive about green, but also there are some products which are basically the same, the same price and they come, maybe they come from local. And I actually really like to, to use this locals part where they're really producing something in their home and they're not valued just because they don't have this great name on it. So our idea on this point was also to make this a small part of the application where you can actually scan whatever it is, like you have a label or a barcode and give the information about how much like CO2 emissions, a quick, I would say this is not something I'm affiliated with. I just put these names because I found that in the databases how much sustainable they are. And to, to uh, I would say just, um, Amid that, the sustainable are always the most expensive part. And uh, uh, okay, so I see in the chat there are some problems. So um, can you hear me well? Just admins. Uh, yes. Am I good? The audio is clear. Okay, so you can hear me well, right? Okay, awesome. Awesome. So yeah, that is actually to hear what I would like to say about these things. And now I would like to ask to put in the chat, how do you buy various things? So um, have you decided to like look over something sustainable? Because I know you guys here from different areas. Are there some rules or some uh, benefits from the country to buy more sustainable things? I know something like this exists in various countries. And if you have like this index uh, on the product, which is also not available in my country. So I believe that those are really important things to put in the chat. I really like to hear someone. And while you're writing in the chat, I would just want to say that uh, there are also many other things that we can every day do for uh, making this planet a better place. So when I was younger, until now, actually, my mom always used to say that everything starts from home. So when I was asking, like, why are you so strong and why are you doing all these things? She raised everything starts from home. And we have to be to behave good in our home to make other things. So I cannot stress how she was right about this and how she was right about something else with this climate change. And when I talk to people to make something good for climate change and saving CO2 emission in their own homes, you know what I get? This. Okay, so you really think that I can invest in solar panels? You really think that I'm now able to move into an energy efficient place 
and you really think that I can go and buy an electric car, it will be great, but I don't have any of that. So solar panels can be really be uh, really expensive for some countries, really not useful for others. So it doesn't uh, have any make sense. Um, on the other side, I would say that energy efficient buildings are really good. But on the other side, um, if you're not able to, you're not just able to go and make your your building more efficient. And electric cars are not even present. So at this point, I would like to uh, acknowledge, I would say, your answers in the chat. So buying from the farmer's market, I would say that this one is very important for buying something that is environment friendly, because uh, most importantly, there are people who are not actually uh, making, as I want to say, plastic. Uh, yeah, because they are, as, as times come up, and the vegetables are turning to be plastic. So farmer's market locals are the great places where you can treat yourself and treat planetary. Also, reusable bags, definitely, definitely plastic bags. Actually, I would just like to say a word about that. In our uh, government, there was a great campaign once in a while where they managed to like higher the prices of the, this plastic bag so that we can just put something reusable bags or bring our or oh, whatever is bags or trolley bags, whatever we have at home, so that we can we can go and use. And that that was the these are the some manipulations that are good for the people because uh, if we don't care about the plants, then we can care about the money. It's sad, but it's very true. Okay, so back to the, the thing that I was talking about. We don't have to have solar panels, efficient uh, energy efficient buildings, electric cars. Here's what I'm talking about when I say to behave well in our house. So. First foremost, it's the cold water that takes lots and lots of more CO2 emissions than the hot water. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm not uh, telling you to freeze your hands just to save CO2 emissions. But whenever you have a choice, don't just put the thermostat of the water to the highest and your, your electricity bill and plant in your hands. Cold water is better for your hands if it is not on an extreme. So, and I was like, I would really laugh at myself, but when I was like younger, I often have like my parents and please turn off the electricity. And I just thought that, ah, it is not a big deal. It is just, um, it will not take the electricity bill. Maybe it is not a good, great deal for electricity bill, but it is a great deal in our CO2 emissions. And one practice that they started to do in the last couple of months lockdown uh, at home is to plant trees. So I found that there are tons of organizations that are willing to plant trees if you're buying, if you buy just some small things from them, just like a pen or a notebook, which you're already buying it, just so you can buy from them. And there are, we have affiliate commissions with them so that you can plant a tree for them. Or if you're able to, I mean, according to your law and to your place where you're living, just go and plant a tree for yourself. You know, there was one great quote that uh, from the person that says that you're no, maybe never going to to see the benefit from the tree you have planted, but if we are all start to to uh, make these plant, plant trees, I would say actions, we will just see all the benefit collectively. But if you start, people will follow. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. But if we start, we have the hope that uh, and even one tree, even one tree can save a lot of more CO2 emissions. I really like that quote that was popular on social media. Imagine if uh, trees were giving Wi-Fi instead of oxygen that we breathe. We were planting trees like crazy. So I really want to, to mention these things that are free in the household and we can do a lot for them. So one of the last questions that I want to raise awareness today is how do we invest in our future? And if I'm asking this to someone who is, I would say a teacher or something or, uh, businessman, maybe if they ask to the government because we have this open, yes, they will say, oh yeah, we are having this 20 billion plan for, I don't know, investments or something. We're having this 30 billion thing that we're going to build. Um, If you ask, I don't know, maybe parents there, how you're having like building that you want to go, but maybe investments in the future are not always something correlated with 20 billion plan, investment plan for the future. Sometimes they can be simple as this. We are young generation of today, but we must hear about the young generation of tomorrow because they're the ones that will recharge us and actually join us. I'll be really honest. 
So I realized about climate action and all these things that are happening right now when I was 14 years old, 14, 15 years old. So if I'm helping today a six-year-old to understand, when they come to 14, they wouldn't be asking themselves, oh my gosh, why is this happening? Why is this happening? They will know. They will know what is happening. In case of uh, me and I believe many other people who, who really understand very close. And if I ask to someone older, maybe these, they understood about this at 30, 50, 70, or maybe they never understood because they were saying that they don't believe in climate change. So as young people start to, to realize what is happening around them, as, as the better, because uh, I would say that the education is one of the tools to make our, um, our society better. And it's very important to go take degrees, go in high schools and all this stuff, um, educate yourself to the PhD and to the best and what you do. And, but it's most important to spread our knowledge to the people. And I'm not telling you that we all need to go and become professors, but maybe have a brother or sister at home. Just spend a few minutes a day telling him about climate action. Maybe you have like a neighbor, okay, alert, not in COVID, but after that, or, or something around that so that you can just spread what you know. And as I mentioned, global warming, not, not, let's not leave global warming till they start in school. And I believe many, maybe other students don't have the opportunity to learn that in school. So we have to connect and to invest in our future, not with the 20 billion investment plan and not with the 30 billion schools and all this stuff. It's great, but we can do our part. We can just have a chat with some six year old and tell them in simple words so that they, when they grow, young, as they grow older, they can like really understand what we were meaning at that point. So I really hate to say this, but when my area, I have to motivate people to do so. And I hope that you guys are coming from some areas where people are more environmentally friendly. But in my situation, I have to prove them, which is impossible. So I have to motivate them. So uh, in the execution plan of the application, I believe that it is best to have them points to make uh, safe CO2 emissions and for each safe CO2 emission to give them free coffee or free juice. So it will connect to them and this will be a routine for saving points instead of saving CO2 emission. It is kind of wrong because at some point I must agree because it's not the greatest, but again, what will planet see? 10 kilograms CO2 saved. So at the end, it will be worth it. And they are again going to the cafe, so uh, that's not going to like charge anything because uh, whether if I'm giving or they are buying, it is the same for planet Earth. So at this point, they are doing an expense of saved uh, 10 kilograms of CO2 emissions. So uh, I would say that the most important thing now we have to do is to build a strong community. I have been very lucky that in COVID-19, I have gotten in touch with a lot of people around the world and that is my group. So I have, this COVID-19 is a really, really strange period where I have managed to lost some great connections with the people around me, but instead connect with some people that are miles away and I believe with all of you who are here today. Uh, and the most important thing that I realized is that when you're strong and we're a community together, then there's nothing that you can break because you have this bond and when you have this bond and just community to stay together, you can overcome every storm that is out there. 2020 was a really turbulent year, and this truly is. I don't want to comment on that, but creating a community of um, young, old, middle-aged people, whatever it is, that will try to persuade, persuade themselves, and after that, go for others, it is really important because they are the strength. I believe that governments are the first sector of CO2 emissions. But if you're in a case that really there is not much to do from the government side, especially in a situation like ours, especially in this recession, then we can build a community. And what is better than having a worldwide community on, on this planet? So I would say um, why now, which is the most important thing for me to say, because look, these are charts from Google, uh, I would say, on reducing CO2 emissions in 2016 and in 2020. So. Uh, we have the early actions, we have like wildfires, and that was when the CO2 emission was very important. 
But in 2020, we have like a continued, continued search on, on how to reduce CO2 emission, even when we had some great, I would say, events like declaration of a global pandemic, uh, the movement of Black Lives Matter, now the US presidential campaign. So even though there were some huge problems that we need to focus on, how to reduce CO2 emission was really search, and that I'm really happy about it. Also, I would like to mention about the 11 and 13 SDG goals and the Paris Agreement, which is an agreement of 196 countries to uh, reduce more than 40% and my country is nowhere to be on there, even though they have signed. And I can't believe that uh, we come to the same end where I would like to say that all of you who are standing here can make a great thing here. So uh, this is our small community of end group that is all over the place, as I mentioned. These are some small workshops and we are mostly like Generation Z people, but open to everyone, which has like the full, the, the power to do something. It's pretty, really, really fun on our meetup because not only we are trying to find ways about the CO2 emission, but I can see that there are some groups of people who have talked about, I don't know, mathematics, I think that there is some kind of a group, also college admissions and all these kind of things are there. So we started to bond ourselves within CO2 emissions, within uh, changing something, but also without. And that is what I'm talking about community, to be strong and not just to go to work, let's say, how can we do this workshop and then live it, but staying together, staying close and staying bond. So uh, all of you here who are listening, I would like to ask you if all of this was pretty interesting for you and if you find yourself to to be a part of all these small actions that we are doing we would love to hear from you so uh i would say that you can find us on instagram or message me directly i'm, I'm leaving here my mail so that i i am sure that i will get your uh, direct notification and also help you to to make even to make a change in your community to make a change uh to gain our to be a part of our community to be whatever you want to be just like come and join us we'll be more than glad to help you <laughs> you will never be alone because we have people from all over the world and uh it's a good representative especially in, CO2 in the in this part of COVID-19 to help something to, to build um a small like change in the world so thank you very much Noah, for sending the my uh like contact information you can message me anytime anywhere I'm pretty responsive uh on everything there and I've left my contacts, not anyone from, from uh, I would say administrative part because I really want to engage with you directly because you're so wonderful people around here, which are, I really like to talk to you real, but in COVID-19, it is a great, a great way that we have an opportunity to stand together. So um, here I would like to mention that if you don't want to join as ambassador, you can like contact me to help you make a part in your organization, it will be great. So if you're good on social media, I would say that I really hate it. But on the other side, it's a, a way to, to help, to manage people. You're more than welcome. However you want, however you think that you can be a part of saving CO2 emissions, you're more than welcome to, to send a message and, and be a part of the great change that we can make together. So just a quick announcement on 15 December, uh, maybe a little bit previous, maybe a little bit later, but around these days, there will be a small demo version of the application and uh, I cannot wait like to send it with all of you here because you have listened to me talking for 42 minutes right now. So I will be more than glad to introduce it to you first. And uh, in these moments, I would like to say that we are not having much time. So this is actually has been an art that has been represented in um, New York, I believe, but also in other countries of the cities. And, we are actually having around six, seven years to achieve zero emissions, which is kind of impossible, but we can make some our parts. We're not the government, we're not uh, some big corporates, but we can really just adjust our uh, small transport. We can be a better buyers and better voters, not only election, but every day. We can manage our households and we can invest in the future generation. So I want to say that these like the four uh, things that now we can start doing because we matter. Each of us has a small place on the universe, which is enough. Because you know, this small place in the universe gives seven billion, seven billion people. And when we are together, we are unstoppable. So thanks a lot.
for your great attention. Uh, and I was just really an honor to, to speak to all of you today. And now uh, I'm open to questions. Uh, please raise your hands, speak, get in the chat, whatever you, you want to do, I'll be more than, than happy to, to talk with you. And you're welcome. Great, great enthusiasm from John. Definitely, we are not the municipality in the government yet, but we are some young people that can really make a great change. And I believe that Kopi is not the only city that has these problems, but uh, around the world, or maybe if we don't have today, we can maybe have tomorrow or some other day, because it is it. When I was five years old, we didn't have any of these problems that we are like surrounding each of every day. So. Thanks a lot for, for your great message. So any questions you guys have, everything related to, to the uh, movement, related to the pollution situation, or what we can all more do, I'm more than happy to answer. Yeah, great question, Agrima. So yeah, um, first of all, as I mentioned, um, this is our current, uh, I would say, um instagram channel that we can you can identify if you don't have that's great so our website is coming like in a couple of days and there will be an opportunity for you to fill an ambassador form but if you want to like be engaged in any way just shoot me a message in this email i will be like more responsive to tell you about it everything that we have uh the website will be coming out soon and as I mentioned on 15th of december we will have like an opportunity to to test what we have done part of the app so everything like is possible and you can be part of anything that, that you would like to engage because I would say options are limitless at this point. You are more than welcome, Agrima. Thanks a lot for your question. Thanks a lot for, for, your, for being here today. It makes me so happy to see you guys from all over the world. We have from Turkey, uh, Egypt, India, Pakistan, USA, Qatar, as I can see here. And I believe you guys, um, especially Kanishka from India, you have, I don't know where your segment it is, but I, I believe that there are many cities that are fighting this air pollution in your country. So yeah, as I mentioned, we're all in this together. <laughs> 